Hello there, I'm Leandra from Paper Artsy. Today we've got a video for you which is all about fresco finish acrylic paints. These are a paint that we've been producing for a couple of years and they've got a very chalky finish. So in this video again we're going back to using the texture backgrounds which you will have seen in other videos and um, how to put paint on top of them and how to create different texture effects. Um, this one is some ferro paste mixed with puff paint that's been put through a stencil and onto um, a little one of what we call a chunky hanging board. This is the smaller size of the two hanging boards. These are great little boards. They make really good um, book covers and they can be worked on all sides. They're made of paper mache but they're actually quite solid. You can't compress. They don't seem to sort of dip down in the middle. So they're really nice to work on, quite easy to stamp on top of. Um, this one here is just how I've used the finished product as a background and then laid something else on top. So um, it's got the nice fresco that's the, the ferro puff paint, God I can't even say it now. It's got the ferro texture paste on the bottom that's been heated and raised. And then we've come over the top with paint and then treasure gold. And it's just been finished with a tag. Um, the, the treasure gold works really nicely onto all sorts of things, onto paper, but it's really good on top of our fresco paints because the fresco paints with their chalk finish give a really nice little bit of tooth for the treasure gold to cling to. So on these flowers for example here, they've got um, lots of different colours of paint on and then just a little dusting of treasure gold on top which gives a completely different effect to them. You can see the treasure gold's also been used over um, charms, these are cogs and gears, um, onto Tim Holtz embellishments and um, also on top of fabric, everything. So it really does work on all sorts of surfaces. So today I'm going to show you how to create a really dark background using the fresco acrylic paints and then highlights with treasure gold. So here's a selection of a few paints that I've chosen to work with um, to create quite a dark background. Um, one of the things I like to do to my paints is to put little colour spots on the tops of the bottles because invariably they're all sitting next to each other and I, I keep them in a tray and if the colours are on the top it's really easy to locate the colour I want but it's also a great way to see exactly what that colour looks like because you kind of, you know, when you're new to using them um, it's, it's something that, I know we've got a colour swipe on the front here, but it's just nice to see it on the top. So the way I do that is the top of the bottle is quite, um, quite shiny. So if you take a sanding block and just give it a light rub in both directions, like that, and then I dip my finger into a bit of paint and just put a swipe of paint on the top there and let that dry out. Um, and then I just top it up every now and then because they do get a bit worn but um, it's a really good way to label your paints so that's just a nice little tip for you. Now if you're not aware already our paints come in three different types of coverage. Opaque which is a very high coverage, semi-opaque which is medium high coverage and translucent which is a low coverage. So the first collection of paints that we released were very pastel shades and the pastels um, are much higher chalk content and so they were all opaque. But we did a second release of colours, uh, bright colours like this, like Hey Pesto, um, Pumpkin Soup was another one that we did in the second release and these are translucents. And the translucents I use in quite a different way to the opaques. So I'm going to try and show you some of those ideas that I have, um, the difference between them. But if you get a bit of a shock when you use some of the newer colours that they don't have the same coverage as the original collection, that's why. Now, um, one of the reasons for that is that it's almost impossible to make a paint that is opaque and really bright. So the brighter the colour generally the more translucent it actually has to be and it kind of makes sense because there's more chalk pigments in the lighter colours and the chalk content kind of sucks the colour out so you end up with a, a lighter pastel version because of the higher chalk content. Now they all dry the same, they all dry matte um, and with that very sort of um, you know matte finish which is really really nice to stamp over so they have the same finish across all of the paints. 
So to start painting, we've got our tag, and on the tag is ferro. The ferro was put through a stencil and heated, and when you heat it, the texture becomes a bit more raised, so you get those nice lumps on there, which makes the background look a lot more interesting than a flat, plain background. It also makes it quite cool fun to paint it. I've got my line of paints down here. I've got no idea what colours I'm going to use, but if I've got a selection to choose from, then it's easier. I've got a paper towel for wiping my brush on, off onto in between colours if I want to, and I've got a damp baby wipe handy, which is really good for removing colour. So we just start by applying some paint on here. This one's Holly. This is a semi-opaque, so you can actually see the tag through it. Whereas if I move to an opaque, like this one is Baltic Blue, can you see there, the coverage is far more instant, much higher coverage right from the beginning. This one here, Hey Pesto, again, it's much more translucent. But you see if you sort of move from one colour to the next, it's quite interesting, I've still got a bit of blue on the brush, so it mixes with the green and starts to give you a bit of a patina. And I just keep switching. So this is the under layer. I'm not too worried about what colour is where. I just want, trying to get patches of different colours in different places. I've got this real thing. I don't like the same everywhere. I try to put different things in different places. And it's just a little, um, this is going to be something that you're, you might see through to when we put upper layers on. So it's just a starting point. Often when you're starting to create, just by getting a bit of colour, a bit of something on your background um, makes it less scary to come over the top with other colours. So picking up different colours. This one's Haystack. This is an opaque. Can you see it goes over the top of other things. If the layers underneath are still wet, then obviously it's going to blend with those. But if it's on its own or going on a dry patch, then the coverage is going to be far higher. But when I'm doing a background like this, it's always good to have a light colour handy, so Haystack is my light. And we're going to bring in some more. This one's Brown Shed. Now you also notice that I tend to work with vertical strokes. I don't know why I do that. I just find it, it ends up looking less messy in the long term so just building up vertical strokes and I'm trying to get that lower level coverage on the tag so literally base coating and um, I'm sort of doing a little bit of wet and wet so there's a bit of blending going on here just starting to get bit more interest. That's quite nice. You bring on the pumpkin soup, although I pretty much just made hay pesto all over again. Another contrasting colour over here. Put a bit of it there. Okay. Right, I'm going to dry this off and then add more layers. It's not entirely dry, but I haven't got the patience to wait for it, so if I scrub the wet bits out from under around there, there we go, dry that again. Okay, now what we're going to do is start to apply the paint a little bit more lightly, so put some on my brush and then remove it. So this is what I call sort of scruffy application. So I've got a little bit on the brush, take away the excess onto the paper towel, and then a drier application of paint onto the tag. A little bit on the brush, wipe off the excess, and bring that through. This is where the translucence can be a bit interesting because you'll see the colours through from below. So you're kind of adding layers rather than totally blocking it out with the opaque shades. That's a nice colour, that one there. I use that a lot. That's um, Inky Pool. 
rubbing it on a bit more rather than deliberately painting. And you see when I get something like this happen where it's looking um, really blocky, so go to I could either go to a bit more of the same colour, which is going to intensify, but then if I scrub it like that, it will soften through into the shades that are nearby. Okay, so you see it's starting to look a bit more interesting, a few different colours in there. So I'm going to give it another dry. Now I want to give it a bit of a lift. So sometimes a colour like this, which is Zesty Zing, can be kind of handy. You don't need too much of it but it is a translucent, as you have probably guessed it's a translucent because it's just so bright. Put a little bit of this on and it will lighten back in some areas. Scrub it on there. So if you want to create an area that's a little bit not quite so dark, then something like that is a great way to do it. But it's not proper zesty zing, it's zesty zing with all the other colours coming through from below. But if you come over the top of that with a darker colour, the darker colour, like this one here, it will sort of pop out a little bit more because it's on a lighter background rather than on top of darker, darker backgrounds. So the, the more that I end up happier with these layers, the less of the paint I'm using less and less colour each time. Alright, let's go for something a bit different, a bit of purple again. So dab it on, remove the excess and scrubby it through. I could do this for hours. Literally just adding colours that's a great thing about paint. You can't do this with inks, you can't do it with dye sprays, you can't really do it with stains. You can only do this kind of thing with paint because it's just layers and layers and layers. And the great thing is that if you really aren't happy with it, then you just come over the top with something really light, like snowflake or a creamy colour. You can always fix anything with paint. Dye sprays are quite hard to sort of fix because, um, because of the nature of a dye, it just, if you put a paint on top of it, you've probably done it yourself, where you've sprayed something with a dye and then you're like, oh, I really don't like that. So you try to paint over it with something like gesso and the gesso just um, the, reactivates the dye and it's very, very hard to sort of rescue what you're doing. Whereas with a paint like this, once it's dry, go over the top with a light shade and bingo, it just instantly gets, start again, build your layers, start from scratch. Okay, we're getting close. <laughs> when is it done? Who knows? When you're happy with the look of it. Now these are probably colours that you wouldn't necessarily choose to put together, but it's amazing how just like a little bit there, see that little bit of brown shed can really lift it. Just that little bit of something quite contrasting there. Um, smoked paprika is another one, just a, a touch of completely different colour is all you need to just change the look of it. So very little paint, put it on and scrubby, scrubby, scrubby at it with your brush. Right, I'm going to give that a dry. Right, I'm pretty happy with that. I've got bits of blues, I've got bits of rusty shades coming through here. I've got some really nice lighter areas there that contrast. The blues and greens contrast ni nicely. I've got bits of purple. 
So, it, but it all kind of looks like it flows really nicely into each other. So I'm going to stop there. That is a nice dark painted background. You can do that onto all kinds of surfaces, card, wooden items, whatever, the same technique. But my next step is I'm going to come over the top and highlight this texture with some treasure gold. Treasure gold is a metallic wax. They come in a beautiful array of colours. Um, this is a permanent opaque product. It's permanent onto any surface, so you can use it onto wood. It's really good onto plastic. It's fantastic onto metal charms, um, little buttons. It, it just goes directly onto all kinds of surfaces. You don't need to treat the surface or prime the surface if you don't wish to. Um, some products, some areas, sometimes I'll sand a little bit to give a bit of extra tooth, but I've found if um, you paint something first with fresco paints and then apply the treasure gold, it, it works really well because our paint having that really matte chalky finish give a perfect tooth for these to grab onto. Um, people have asked me questions on the back of other videos. What's the difference between these and the Viva Decor product, Inca Gold? Um, Inca Gold is a water-based product. Uh, it's this stuff here. It's a water-based product and um, it is very similar but because it's water based it's not permanent so you have to be a little bit careful this we have been hearing a lot of problems with the shelf life of it so we've moved away from using it because um, there it does seem to sort of be going off quite quickly in the pots so um, until they resolve that I'm not too happy um, working with it but because this is um, uh, a wax and it's used by furniture restoration companies. It's a product manufactured here in the UK for the last 40 years so it stands the test of time. Um, and I just love the colours. So the way, what you want is a soft um, brush. It can be a large brush, a small brush. I tend to just keep sticking with this brush over and over. So I'm just going to pick up a few colours and then work with the product. So you just dip into the pot. Some of them, some of the treasure golds have a dif different consistency to others, I'm not sure why. Um, some of them are quite hard and firm and others are a bit softer. So pick up a little bit of product. If you're not sure how much you've got on your brush, lightly tickle it on a baby wipe to get a feel for it. And then I'm just going to start by lightly tickling onto the background that I've made. Oh, I just love doing this. Because we've got a dark background, as you know, with any mica-based type products, this is not a mica though, these are actual metallic powders. Um, they just pop off a really dark background. So you might want to be a little bit careful about how much you apply, if you don't want to obliterate too much of your background. Because like I said, it is opaque, so it is going to cover everything up. Okay, so now let's try a few other colours. Uh, what should we go for? Let's go for a touch of blue. You can just dip from one pot to the next if you wish. here. Let me show you indigo because this is quite an odd colour. It's a sort of a purpley, a like a purpley aubergine, depending on the on the surface you get it onto. This one's a bit wetter than some, so you can see it is a little bit sloppier, but it's a really nice edging colour. And it's sort of shot with gold, so you're going to see that start to come through as it polishes up sort of dry it off and it goes a whole lot more lighter. When you put it on it goes on really inky and then as you as it dries the gold really shines in it and it looks almost aubergine colour. It's quite a pretty one but I like to put that down and then I'll put something else on top of it or even this one's um, rose quartz. Even just tip a little bit at the edge there or you can get your finger into it. See if you put your finger in you get a much more solid but they're really nice together those colours. Right, 
if we put some pink up there, we need to put some pink down here. Okay, it was probably getting close to enough, maybe a touch of the green. If you finger dip it and it's a bit too harsh for your liking, then just get a, like a smaller, cleaner brush and just sort of soften it out a little bit. See that sort of blends it. That's nice, that's um, emerald green that I just used there. Um, this one here is Florentine. So I'm going to put that on and then soften it. Okay, that's about all there is to it. So the sorts of things I do with those is like I showed you earlier, if you use them as backgrounds, you can lay them up, but they are really nice on their own um, if you're decorating something like a jewellery box or a wooden item, then they, they look really great as a paint effect. So, have some fun with our fresco acrylic paints. Um, have a go, and we'll see you on our next video.